I'm Jill Casper with Mid Minnesota Federal Credit Union and the Bridges Speakers Bureau. And today we're going to talk about how to rent an apartment. So when you're ready to move out, you'll have a couple different options. You can move into an apartment. You can move into a house, rent a house. If you're going to college, you may live in the dorms. Many colleges require you to live in your dorms one or two years. I highly suggest it. Um, it's a great way to meet people. Uh, I believe all of my kids, the people that they met in the dorms are the people that they moved in with in later times and they're best friends to this day. Um, my son, who's a hunt, hunter fisherman, he got onto a floor at Bemidji State that was all people who were interested in hunting and fishing. Um, that dorm had gun lockers and fish cleaning stations in them. So um, it's a great way to network and get to know people of living in the dorms. So one mistake that people often make when they're renting in their budgeting portion of it, they think, okay, my rent is $400 a month. There are a lot of extra things that you need to pay for when you move out on your own. Your cable, dish TV, city water, sewer, electric and heat, often those are two separate bills. Your phone, trash pickup, internet, internet's separate than your cable. Probably wanna get some renter's insurance. These extras cost $30 per month each. And many of these things, you're gonna have to put a deposit down. So if you want your internet, you're gonna have to put a deposit plus your monthly bill. So there are a lot of extra things that you need to pay for when you move out on your own. So if you're looking, and right now you can look online, um, in the paper, all sorts of different places for available housing. You're gonna have to apply to live in that apartment. And they're doing that because they wanna make sure, the landlords wanna make sure that you're the right fit for that apartment. They're gonna ask you your name. They're gonna ask your social security number. And with that, they're gonna pull your credit report and your criminal background check. They're gonna wanna know who's all living there. Do you have pets? Many places won't rent to you if you have pets. Um, on this particular application, they ask what your vehicle make and model is. There's a landlord that I um, have talked to before, and when he's showing the apartments, he looks in the back of the person's vehicle. And he's looking to see how clean it is because he believes that if your car is a mess, that's how you're gonna keep your apartment. So know that you're interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you to, to live in that apartment. They're gonna to wanna to know your employment status. If your rent is $400 a month and you're only making $200 a month, they wanna know how are you gonna pay that rent? Is, are your parents paying for half? Um, is it part of your school package? What does that look like? They're gonna to wanna to know rental history. Now, maybe if this is your first apartment, you won't have a rental history. That's really common around college campuses. Um, maybe you put on here, currently live with my parents. This is my first time out on my own. They're gonna wanna know, have you ever filed for bankruptcy? Do you have any lawsuits? They may ask for references. They may ask for bank information. Quite often at the credit union, we get calls from rental companies saying, Jill Carlson says that she has a account with you and is she in good standing? And you're gonna sign paperwork to allow them to call us and give us that information. They might want credit references. Is there anybody that you pay bills to? And they may call them. Then you're gonna sign the bottom and that's gonna allow them to do your criminal background, check your banking and all those things. There might be a fee for applications. I've seen as low as 25 and I think that most expensive application fee I saw was around the University of Minnesota. It was $175 just to apply. So be prepared for that. Notice on that application that I talked through, they did not ask, what is your race? What is your color? What is your religion? Gender, do you have disabilities? That is illegal for them to ask that information and it is illegal for them not to rent to you because of that. And I'm gonna give you a resource at the end if that does happen to you. And your landlord also has responsibilities. They have certain regulations that they have to obey. They have to make adequate repairs to the apartment. They have to keep your common areas safe. Now what, you, what your bedroom looks like is probably on you, but the common areas around the, the property. They have to supply running water, maintain the plumbing, heating, and electrical. And one thing that's important is, as far as your rights are that they need to give you 24 hour notice before coming into your apartment. Um, that's one of your rights as a tenant. Know that they can't just walk in in the middle of the night. And I've heard stories from college students that say their landlords show up at two o'clock in the morning and just walk in the door. So. You have looked at the apartment, you applied, 
and the landlord calls you and says, yep, we've accepted you. So now it's um, time to sign the lease. A lease is a contract, is a legal binding contract. Now, if this is your first apartment, you may have to have a co-signer on your lease. If you have limited credit, and that's usually gonna be maybe your parent has to co-sign for you. Uh, one student that I worked with was moving to a house with five people and they required co-signers. Well, three of the people's parents would not co-sign for them. So the landlord said, that's okay, you give me three months rent up front and I'll let you move in. So be prepared for that. If the landlord says, oh, don't worry about it, I know your mom and dad, we don't need to have a lease of any kind, I would really ask for one. The shortest lease I've seen is maybe like three paragraphs. The rent is due on this date, here's how much it is, utilities are not included, are there any rules, and sign the bottom. The longest one that I've seen was, again, around the University of Minnesota, it was 23 pages long. So when my kids moved out and rented their first places, we would not let them sign a lease until we looked at it as the parents. And that you have every right to say, I need to take this and I need to have my parents look at it. And that does a couple things for you. It makes sure that the lease is legit and there are good landlords and there are bad landlords. It tells that landlord that there are parents involved and I think that's important for them to know. Every lease is different, every single one. So make sure that you read every single line and you understand what every single line means. And if you do not understand, make sure that you ask. We've had, um, on my oldest daughter's lease, we added in a line on there that said, she was moving in with people that she didn't really know very well. And you know, what if one of those people moved out? Would the landlord allow somebody else to come in and take over the lease? We added in something in the lease on that to protect her. And don't break your lease if you can avoid it. You're gonna want this rental history. You may go on your credit report. If you don't pay your rent and you owe them money, they may send you to collections. So a couple key things that you're gonna to want to see on a lease are when is the rent due, how much is owed every single month, and how do you pay it to them? So you may have to send it to their bank. You may have to send it to a management company. My daughter, the landlord came the first of the month and picked it up. So they had to be ready the first of the month in an envelope to get the rent. You probably have to pay a security deposit just to get in the door and we'll talk about how to get that back in a little bit. Um, so maybe anywhere between $200 and $700 up front to be able to get in the door. So that will be part of your lease too. And how do you get that security deposit back? Um, you may not get it back until 30 days after you move out. And what would prevent you from getting it back? Are your utilities included or not? Um, we live in a fairly cold environment. And so utilities are gonna be a lot more in the winter than they are in the summer. My son moved into a house in northern Minnesota and the rent was very, very cheap. He comes to find out in February it was very, very cheap because the utility bill was $650 and they kept the house at 60 degrees. <laughs> so you have every right to ask what are the average utility rates for this apartment and actually you can probably have them get a report from the energy company. Pets. Most apartments don't let you have pets. And if they do, you're gonna pay extra probably every month or extra in your deposit for that. So be aware of that. Parking is another thing. Where do you park? Is there a parking fee for that? Um, many, especially in a bigger city, you can only park on one side of the road one day or one side of the road the other day. In college, I lived with 11 girls and we had four parking spots. So it made it very difficult for parking and coming and going. So ask those questions. Insurance. I mentioned a little bit earlier about renter's insurance. It's something that I highly, highly recommend. It's extremely inexpensive, $15 to $20 a month. You can add it to your parents' homeowner's insurance or you can add it to your car insurance. And what that does is it protects your belongings. So the insurance for the apartment or the house that the landlord has protects their property. But for you, um, if you were to get broken into, if you were to get something stolen, one of the top stolen things on college campuses is textbooks. They can't be tracked, they're very expensive, and they're easy to transport. So if you get your textbooks stolen, if you have renter's insurance, it will reimburse you for the cost of those textbooks. Know that if you do not pay your rent, or if you damage things and don't pay them back, it will go on your credit report if they turn it into collections. So be really, really careful about that. They're only gonna give you so many keys, they're not gonna let you 
copy them, so do not lose them. A coworker of mine lost her keys and it was $250 to replace a set of keys. And there may be house rules. Uh, when I was in college, one rule was you could not have more than six people in the apartment at one time. And if you got busted for having more than six people, then you lost your security deposit. Um, uh, a teacher that I work with, they did not read the part that they were in charge of plowing and mowing. And so if the landlord were to go by and saw that it needed to be done and had to do it, they were taking $35 a time off of their security deposit. They didn't read that part. They just thought the landlord was being nice, doing all their plowing and all their mowing. By the end, they had zero security deposit left from that. So again, I can't stress enough how important it is to read every single bit of your lease because every single every place that you move into is going to be a little bit different. So we've signed our lease and now we're ready to move on. You're really excited, right? You've got all your stuff, you've got everything packed up. You've got one more thing that I need you to do and that is do a walkthrough with your landlord. You all have phones. You can all take pictures and video. I want you to walk through that rental and take pictures of any damage, no matter how minimal you think it is. If there's a pin mark on the walls, if there is a stain on the floor, uh, I want you to test all the running water because that's gonna set the tone for when you move out, right? And if you get your damage deposit back, if all that stuff is written down, then you won't be responsible for it later. I had a student that moved into an apartment that had a really big picture window and the carpet was faded where the picture window was. Didn't seem like a problem. She did not write it down. At the end of her lease, they required her to re-carpet the entire apartment. So there's good landlords and there's slumlords. My point of telling you all this is to make sure to protect you. There was a landlord when I was in college that um, when, he, when they moved out, he would move the fridge out and there was a hole in the wall. Well, nobody had pulled out the fridge to look there, right? So he said, oh, that's gonna cost about $300 to fix. Took it out of the security deposit. He would move the fridge back the new people would move in and he would do the same thing at the end. So be overly cautious when you do that. Take all the pictures, um, any broken screens, anything. Take pictures and file them with your lease. Leave the apartment in the same condition as when you moved in. Uh, most rentals will say, oh, norm normal wear and tear is okay. But what does that mean? Many leases will say you have to clean the carpets and you have to clean the carpets with XYZ company. It's very specific. So when I was in college and we moved out of our house, we were all very cheap. So we rented a carpet cleaner and spent two days cleaning all three floors of carpet. Landlord came in, said I checked with XYZ company and they said you did not use them to clean the carpet. We still had to pay for the carpet cleaning because we did not use his approved carpet cleaner. So again, read the lease. If for some reason your landlord is not holding up their end of the bargain, if they're not making the repairs, if they are being discriminatory, there is a government agency called HUD, Housing and Urban Development, and they've got a website, hud.gov. That is a place for you with free resources to be able to help you with your landlord issues. The one thing I kind of want to close with is roommates. You're going to live with a lot of different people, and it's really exciting at first to move out on your own and move in with your best friend but you've never lived with your best friend before. You don't know maybe your best friend is big fat slob. <laughs> so my advice is to set boundaries before you move in, and it seems like a mom thing to say, but sit down and talk about what does cleaning look like? How do we handle food? Do we share food? Do we have our own food? The biggest fights that I have seen with my college kids is over a tater tot hot dish <laughs> that somebody ate of somebody else's. Um, do you allow guests? If um, somebody's boyfriend or girlfriend comes and stays a week, are you okay with that? Have these discussions before you move in. It will save you so much heartache during the process. Um, for my eldest son, he was the first one to move out and we were a little worried about it. And he was moving in, three of the four people he was moving in with, we, had, we didn't know them. We didn't know their parents. Um, so what we had them do is sign a roommate agreement. We found it online. And it clearly stated what everybody paid for rent, who was in charge of paying the cable bill, who was in charge of paying the rent, who was in charge of paying electric, what happened if they didn't, um, what was the cleaning schedule, uh, what happened if somebody damaged the walls, what was the responsibility there. And whether they used it or not, it, 
what it did for that group of five guys is they sat down, they walked through it and talked about it. And they probably had the best roommate relationship schedule of any of the kids because they had those discussions beforehand. The biggest, other, biggest fight I got in in college was over toilet paper. So it wasn't about money. It was about these little things that nobody talks about. You are heading in, those of you who are moving out, heading into some of those fun times of your life. It's really fun and it's very exciting. As long as you follow some of these tips and follow some of these um, ideas, it won't cost you too much financially and make it much more enjoyable. Thanks and have a really great time. To learn more, visit bridgesconnection.org slash speakers.